So guys, I've been trading for over seven years now. And out of all of the things that I've learned, what I'm going to share with you in this video um, is what I deem to be the most important essence of what trading is. And this is something that I have not seen any other trading educator fully go into depth with because I believe that most of them either don't understand it or they don't care enough to understand it. And I believe that this will really help you because if I could go back, this is really what I would teach to myself before I taught myself anything else. Um, this knowing this will help to guide you, guide your decisions from knowing, you know, is this the right decision to make? Should I continue down this path? Should I change? For me, this would have been the guiding light that I needed. And so I really, really do hope that this helps you. Now, before going into that, I just want to give a shout out to Pierce. Pierce is one of our longstanding students. He has been through hell and back with trading. He's really struggled at times. But to see where he's at now, he's now been accepted into the FTMO uh, Prime Trader Program. And he has hit his 10K payout milestone um, in recent months uh, with FTMO. So congratulations to him. Um, anyway, what is the value of the market? What is the purpose? Well, it's the price and value. For example, the exchange rate, if we're dealing with FX, is giving you the most accurate determination of value based on the current information available. Now, you may or may not have heard of the term of the efficient market hypothesis. This is the idea that current prices reflect all of the widely known information available to the market, which includes past data and also the expectations or future data. Now, this is a real issue, and this is really a problem that most newbies ignore or discount how important it is. Because what this means is it means that if you're looking for a predictive edge, you're not going to find it in technical analysis. Now, oh, Sam, you can't say that. Like, you, you know, you talk about technicals all the time. The reason that the, this is the case is because everything that is represented in price, like this isn't a perfect theory, but it's very, very close to perfect because the speed at which things are priced in, in really big markets in particular, is very, very quick, which means that if you're trying to be right more often than you're wrong about the direction, you know, independent of risk reward, because obviously if you have a tiny risk reward, you're risking $100 to make $1, you're going to have a really high win rate. But let's just imagine that this is all with a, you know, one-to-one, -one, um, about, about basically like a, a standard average, right? To have a predictive edge, you need to be right more than the break-even rate of your strategy. In other words, you need to be right most of the time more than you're wrong with a one-to-one. -one. Now, in order to do that, you need to have some kind of an edge. If you don't have an edge, you're basically just a gambler operating in randomness. Now, here's the big problem. Most people will take this when they are new. And what will they do? They'll conclude that, yeah, yeah, I understand. But like, I've got this strategy and like, I think that my technical system gives me an edge. Put this in quotation marks. And what people will do is they'll go round and round in a cycle at this stage. They'll try one system, which will represent with T. They'll move to another one, which will represent with T again. They'll go to another one. They'll go to another one. And then they'll finally end up at another one. And the cycle will repeat itself over and over and over again. The problem is, is that despite how many people will sell you and tell you that their technical system is magic or at the really extreme end of this, you've got like smart money guys who are basically going, oh, there's a there's a magic man, you know, controls the market or you're a big thing. Just that's the, the most dumb I actually used to be on board with that style of trading. So I'm sorry if you guys were following me around there. And um, But really, it, that makes no sense. Now, it doesn't mean that some of those ideas can't necessarily work, but they can work for reasons other than you think that they work. And understanding why is really important, because if you don't, then it will mess up all the rest of your decisions that are really important to trading. Technicals aren't that helpful because technicals are just the past. As soon as you look at them, they are the past, but they're not just the past. They're also the expectations of the future because all the market participants are giving you the price right now. They're all making the price what it is right now because they're pricing in what is valuable. Okay, what they perceive as valuable, which is based on the information that they know and the expectations about the future. Now, why is this so important to us? Why is it so relevant to us? Because it means that 
if you're just basing things off technicals, you are at a huge disadvantage because you are basing things and you're just basically assuming that the past is going to continue in the future in the same way. And yes, there are patterns that expose themselves over time, but there is an even bigger pattern going on that everyone ignores, which is, yes, a pattern may present itself and it may work really, really well, but guaranteed it will then go through a period where it doesn't work well. This is the same reason why if you take any algorithm, and I learned this lesson through um, uh, a few years of algorithmic trading, you can take any strategy, pretty much none of them work if you backtest them back far enough. Every strategy always ends up failing. And by failing, I usually mean blowing an account or being just about break even, but obviously minus commissions and spreads, it's a loss. Um, basically, most strategies always end up losing. And this took me a really long time to get to grips with because, you know, I'd gone pit through periods of like amazing returns with systems and then they'd just fall apart and then I'd re-strategize and create something new. And I never really understood what was going on because what's really going on is market conditions change. You know why? Because the past isn't a perfect reflection of the future or I should say the future isn't a perfect reflection of the past. And so if we don't understand how markets are being priced in, then nothing else really matters. doesn't matter how good you think your technical system is, how well you draw a little line on the chart and think that you're Batman, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter because eventually it will fail. Now, this, will, this is even true with the strategy that we currently teach uh, in the program. And this is a perfect example of this because I'll give you an example. A couple of weeks ago, our system gave 20 plus setups in a week. Now, that's very high for any system but it's very very high for ours in particular out of those myself chris and some of the top traders in the group as well took three or less of those some of the more new and less um, experienced ones would take you know nine or more now the difference between these two can be the difference between profitability and not because the actual strategy that we teach is so simple, a child could do it. It's so like, it's literally black and white, it's two rules, very, very easy. And the reason that we're so comfortable with sharing the tools that we use to develop the strategy is because we know that unless people have the other things, they're not gonna be able to make it work. Because what most people do then is they will take a strategy, they'll take a technical system and they'll move on to the next phase which they'll go on and they'll backtest the living hell out of it. They'll be like, oh, backtest, backtest, blah, 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 which is kind of similar to what I said over here. But they don't factor in the market conditions changing, as I said, with pricing things in. And so translating it to this, what that means is it means that they don't know when to take setups and when not to. And this is really the key skill. And it comes down to understanding this, because if we understand that the markets are constantly trying to process all widely known information, then we need to understand, okay, well, what is the big new information that the market cares about? Because events equal new information. Now, I'm not just talking about economic calendar events that you see along, your along the bottom, although they're very important. And I'll show you examples of those in a minute. But events give you new information. You'll see this, markets are trying to price them in very, very quickly when there's a big surprise or there's something that's unexpected that is when you're going to see big volatility in the market. Now, it's a little bit more nuanced than this because if we're dealing with a market that's heavily traded, so in other words, a highly liquid market, and the FX market is one of, if I believe it is the most liquid market in the world, then what that means is essentially because there's more money going through, the chances are there are more eyeballs on it. Now with FX, this is especially pronounced and it's the reason why FX markets are traditionally one of the hardest markets to predict because in a highly liquid market, you've got more people watching it. And with more people watching it, more people tend to watch the things that they perceive as valuable. So when more people are watching those things, it means that differences and any slight changes are going to be tracked quicker and they're going to be priced in even quicker. So by the time you've had the chance to, let's just say a new piece of information comes up that GDP has gone up. This is just a random example. You've seen that it comes up. By the time you've had a chance to internalize it, think about what it means, chances are it's already been priced in. And so this is one of the flaws of fundamental analysis, especially with FX, um, that you will run into this issue a hell of a lot. What it means is that in order to have a predictive edge, what you really need to do is you need to be right when others are wrong. Because trading is a zero-sum game. 
But what does this mean for us, you know, everyday traders? Well, it means that the best directional traders that are getting involved in predicting the market are typically people who are contrarian, not always, but most of the time. Um, this is less true in like a really liquid market because you don't necessarily need, like there are always going to be people on the other side of your transaction. Um, but as a general rule, the goal is to be right when other people are wrong because it's a zero sum game. But that's a lot of information. Like what, what's important out of this to us as traders? Well, events equal new information, but more importantly than that, if we know we are in an environment where things are going to be priced in really, really quickly, uh, probably quicker than we know. The question is, is how can we then gain an edge? Well, for us, it's about understanding the environment, picking out when a good time to trade is, as I mentioned, and a bad time to trade is. And that really comes down to, especially in highly liquid markets, is volatility. Now, this is supported by empirical research. If you go and do your uh, own due diligence into the science behind this, volatility is much more predictable in FX than direction is. In fact, it's been proven that picking the direction consistently in the FX markets is extremely difficult, arguably the most difficult out of all the markets, right? So I don't try to predict the direction. I try to predict the volatility because if I know key things that decide the volatility, that's going to tell me most of the time whether I'm in the right environment or not. For example, our system is a mean reversion system, meaning unlike a trend system where we ride the trend, we're looking for, you know, if we have an extended moves, we look to kind of fade it back. We're basically trading extremes. This strategy of trading extremes works terribly in a highly trending environment or in a very volatile environment. So being able to identify volatility is the key skill not oh my god have i put my indicator setting or my price setting on the right thing or have i adjusted my fibonacci blah 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 like have i done all that stuff the right way that is not important because if you can't pick the right environment nothing else matters and with fx volatility is really the big uh, needle mover for that and in order to understand what's best with volatility, it comes down to understanding events and new information and understanding what the market you're trading cares about. Now, I'll give you an example that moves over to stocks. So as I said, a lot of eyeballs means that things are going to be priced in very quickly. If we were to look at Apple stock, right, tons of people and analysts are going to be watching it. But not just that. Most people, most analysts are looking and analyzing stocks in the same way, in a very similar way to people trading FX. Like most analysts analyze FX in the same way. Um, and so what happens is you have a, an element of herd psychology, meaning out of all of the people that trade it, let's just say there's like millions of people within this bubble. A lot of them are going to converge on one to five main types of analysis, which means the opinions of this small group in the middle become a bigger segment of the group, meaning more and more people start agreeing with them. And that becomes the general consensus. That is what is meant by information being priced in it normally starts with a small group and then expands out expands out over time but because tons of people are watching it tons of people are monitoring the you know the earnings changes of the company or new things that are being released or new data and they're all tracking it and trying to get even quicker data because they're doing it things are priced in so fast that it's almost impossible to gain an edge looking at the same information as them and trying to trade it in the same way as them, which means you're basically left with two options. You either stay with the high eyeballs and you look for information they don't look at that is significant, or you change to an environment with less eyeballs, because less eyeballs gives you a similar result. Because less eyeballs means that you're more likely to find information imbalances, essentially. It's essentially like if you know that the market is trying to price in things based on new information, but that information isn't spreading as quickly because not as many people are looking at a tiny stock no one's heard of, then that's going to be the grounds to find a potential edge in stock trading, right? Now, if you're interested more in kind of stocks and stuff like that, you can check out my second channel. I talk a lot more about these types of ideas and fundamentals and stuff like that. But the point of this is to understand that the more eyeballs something has and the more people looking at things and analyzing it in the same way, the less of a predictive edge there is, which is why with FX, where there's an environment where 
so many people are analyzing things and most of them are analyzing it in the same way. Understanding events is really one of the key skills to identifying when to trade and when not to trade much more than, oh my God, is my supply and demand zone drawn right? Or, oh, I found this new strategy on a YouTube video and it looks cool. That's dumb. And I'm not saying that to be rude. It just is. And I was the dumbest of them all. Okay. So it's not me saying that I'm better than anybody here. In fact, the opposite. Um, so what does this mean? Well, it means that volatility is really the gold dust. So if we look at my current Euro USD chart, we see a clear example of this. What the hell are all these vertical lines? Think about them as new information. I don't have every high impact economic event marked on. I'm mainly focused on employment and central bank communication. Uh, these tend to have the biggest results. Um, and especially for central bank stuff, it's two days before, two to three days before, and two, two to three days after is typically where the volatility uh, sees the biggest increase. And that's very, very significant. Because with our system, where we're trading a mean reversion approach, you know, if I'd have been fading this move, let's just say, and trying to sell into this over here, something like this, you know, I could have added three or four losses onto my week just by trying to continually fade it as each new position got stopped out and got stopped out without knowing what the market was actually trying to do, or trying to price in the new information or the anticipated expectation of new information from these announcements or one of the other events. Me not understanding that is basically like trade uh, trading blind. And I wish that I had known that sooner because without that, I really just don't believe that it's going to be anywhere near as profitable uh, in the long term. Now, sometimes that can mean trading less than you would like to. Uh, and but again, would you prefer to be profitable or would you prefer to be maybe a little bit on the board side or slightly adapt your approach? Um, I've met many people who have been trading for longer than me. Sometimes I met a guy I've been trading for 15, 20 years and he still wasn't profitable. I don't want to be that person. You know, I never, I never liked the idea that that would be how people chose to spend their life because trading is a means to an end at the end of the day. Like you may say it's your passion, but trading itself is actually pretty boring. Um, and so understanding this is, would be what I would go back and teach myself. I teach myself how to forecast the things that are important. If I'm in FX, that's a highly liquid market. It means more eyeballs on it. it. means I'm going to be focusing more on volatility. With low cap stocks, that introduces other risks. Um, but I'm going to pay more attention to uh, information and balances and stuff like that in that environment. Very, very important to understand what type of trader you are and how you're looking to execute and how you're looking to take advantage of that market. Because if you don't know the right environment, then you're screwed. You could have the best technical system, but you're still screwed. Or you can have a really basic technical system that's so easy, you, you, know, you could do it with your eyes closed and just have a good idea of when the best time to deploy it is and do better than someone who's got a really complex technical system, you know, based on like the magic, I'm doing heavy quotation marks, um, you know, based on some sort of magic market manipulation, blah, blah, bullshit method, right? You need to make a decision as to what your market preferences and understand what that entails and what that means for you as a trader because if you don't you will waste years like i did i wasted years and years and years in different variations of this cycle it would go from technical variations to risk management variations to trading different currencies different assets wondering what i was doing wrong i just didn't get it and i've ended up coming to the conclusion that it wasn't possible and so i quit for a while then i came back with fresh eyeballs and then i started reassessing what was really going on um, and it's, I wish I could say that it was just that simple. I came back and it was all fine. It took many, many years of back and forth and trying one thing and coming back. And really, it always came back down to this. And so I really, really hope that this has been helpful for you. Um, if you would like to learn any more about any of these things, obviously you can join our program. But if you'd like a video explaining it for free here on YouTube, let me know the specific thing you'd like to hear more about. Uh, and I'm more than happy to make that video for you. But uh, yeah, take care. I hope you have a very amazing rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.